TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. Well, by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, little warning screen. Um, I, I will put this. I think there's going to be some negativity here. We'll see. Uh, don't forget we are on Twitch. So go to twitch.com, lock in, usernames at the bottom of the screen, man. It's free. Uh, and we also got Patreon where we post five days a week, Monday through Friday. This is, I don't even know what show this is. This doesn't tell me on here. But the title is 26-year-old rookie cop makes big mistake. I can't wait, honestly. I'm, exce I'm ecstatic. Copyright, copyright disclaimer under, under Section 107, 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. After months of training, a new batch of rookie cops has hit the streets to learn on the job. Oh my god, these are my favorite cops to run into. Cause you could like you could throw them off that game so quick. It's just not saying that I condone that type of behavior, but you know, that's just me. <laughs> I've been pushed out of my comfort zone. You go out there and people look at you. They haven't got a clue. They look at the uniform and assume that you know exactly what you're doing. Now look at that badge, and I think, oh, I'm actually doing it. It's not I never assume any cop has knows anything. Pretend. I absolutely love doing the job. It's addictive. The chase, the buzz, you know, going into the unknown. There's, there's no other job like it. Okay. We've spotted the try hard. It is strange thinking I'm in charge. And really, I haven't had that much life experience. You know, I think being a young lad, I've still got a long way to go yet. But you've got to step up to the mark. You've got to be responsible. Do you know what my problem is? I think I've got my head up my arse half the time. <laughs> like, I just, my head is in the clouds. No, it's definitely what you ask. <laughs> <laughs> Rookie Jack is spending his first three months partnered with Andy, an officer with eight years' experience. They're stationed in Boston. Andy still look like a rookie himself. But have to patrol a vast area, which means they spend a lot of time together this is on gonna the road. Be good. This is going to be good. What do you want to see more of? I'd personally like you to see you being more of a cop <laughs> out on the streets, spotting stuff, looking around at people, being suspicious. That's normally what people join the job for, to go out and catch criminals. Right. What do you think I've joined the job for? I don't know, only you've not told me, so... Speak to people. That doesn't catch bad guys, is it? And all... Were you lonely? To speak to people? Do you know what I did? Yesterday, I went to Target and I spoke to everybody that looked at me. Because I'm, I'm really like, I'm, cool, I'm a cool person. And mostly it was females that was looking at me. So it was like, alright. This is what y'all want? Y'all want some conversation? I spoke to one girl, I told her her shirt was nice. <laughs> it was a Steelers shirt. She had on a football shirt. Oh, she she started smiling hard. I was like, I was like, all right. Uh, Ultimately, that's what we're, we're here to do, isn't it? It's to prevent part crime. of what we're here to do. It's a large part of what we're here to do. Yeah. Jack seems to question everything. I understand that deep down it's, what, it's because Jack wants to learn, but I can see how some people um, may see that as being um, a little bit argumentative. Because I wanted to prove myself to Andy, I'm thinking, right, I'm going to stop somebody today. So I'm really looking out, but I'm not just going to... Oh, gonna my God. So to prove yourself to another cop, you're going to slap somebody today. That's not it. That's not it. I don't feel like that's the right motivation. Stop anybody, because I don't want to do that. I want to stop somebody that's suspicious, so it's about really, like, switching my eyes on, my police eyes, and, uh, and looking out. 
Jack has only one hour left on his shift. So far, he hasn't made any arrests. I feel like that's a good day. What? What, what's they doing? We happened to be driving down this side street and I saw this couple and it looked like they were exchanging possibly drugs or something. It looked very suspicious anyway. What that's called is 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 hand-to-hand -hand transaction. I got stopped by a cop downtown before because they said I, that I did a hand-to-hand -hand transaction. But I really was just, I met somebody and I said, nice to meet you and shook their hand. I, I swear, like, police is crazy. Anyway. Hi. As we came round the corner, you, you looked quite sheepish at us. Well, I looked at a car, please go. Yeah, and you've got your hands in your pockets. Have, oh, you, got, have you got anything it, on you at it's all? Cold. How you're behaving now is oh. making me think that you've perhaps got something on you. Oh, okay. okay? So I'm going to stop and search you. Right. right, if you can just keep your hands out of your pockets and I'll search them, thank you. <laughs> have you been in trouble with the police? No. For anything no. before? No. Neither of you? No. <laughs> and it's is like... this the first time this has happened to you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. He looking like, oh my God. <laughs> Gave Jack some feedback about um, his proactive policing. Within five minutes, he'd wanted to stop somebody and stop searching. I, I don't know if that's, that's quite what I was, I was looking for. I'm just going to search your pockets, if that's all right. Yeah. Just got these, yeah. <coughs> Did he? <laughs> OK, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> all right, thank you. His partner looking like they do not fit the typical profile. Why are we even... That's, that's the vibe I'm getting out of him. Okay. A thorough search of Jack's suspects turns up nothing. Obviously. He's got proper attitude, he had. Yeah. <laughs> I'll turn around and say to him, didn't ask for your attitude, I asked for your address. So you got sassy with him. What did you notice about those two, then, that made you want to turn around? Well, they sort of move closer together, and I'm like, it just looks a bit weird. We didn't find out, though, did you? <laughs> no. So you just stopped two innocent members of the public. <laughs> well done, Jack. <laughs> you are a bully. Well done. <laughs> I, I mean, well, that's, that's, that's the, you know what I'm saying? That's the typical outcome. Stopping two innocent members of the public. A member of the public, if, you, if you're not doing anything wrong uh, and, you, and you do get stop searched, I can imagine how that probably feels and why somebody might be defensive. I think what my problem is is a confidence thing. You know, I might come across as quite confident, but I don't want other people to know that I'm not too sure about how to deal with things. And that's not just members of the public, that's everybody. In Skegness, rookie Dan Where? started working as a new police officer a couple of days ago. You can tell the new boy look getting some shine on here. This evening is his first night shift. I'm putting this on now. Polishing my isn't Lincolnshire boots. I'm going to walk out that door. I'm going to hell because my first thought wasn't positive. And I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Is he going to be busy? Is he going to be quiet? You hit that blue light, you're like Moses parting the sea. <laughs> <laughs> Ew! <laughs> Eventually, Dan will graduate to policing the streets alone. But for now, he's partnered with Carl. Although he's an experienced officer, this is his first time teamed up with a rookie. 30 years ago, people would join at 18. Yeah. Now, you don't find many police officers below 20 at the minimum. I'm 30, I'm still young, but I've got a lot more life. Can't tell from <laughs> my hair, receding hair. Bro, go bald. That makes it worse. But I'm, I'm 30. 30. <laughs> Look. I drive up the receding hair, a little hair, then a massive jaw, though. Oh. But... There you go. Hey, he's witty. He's probably been dealing with people making fun of him his whole life. So his comeback game is strong. 
that was funny. I don't often laugh at cop jokes, but since you're a rookie, you just coming in, you got it. They're on their way to visit a couple Carl knows well. The rookies are discovering they get called out to the same people again and again. This couple has a history of domestic violence. These two, we have numerous, numerous dealings with them. On this occasion, he is just literally ringing her up, saying, I love you, I want to get back with you. And I, my advice is going to be, or our, your advice is going to be, to change the number tomorrow. Hello? That's terrible advice. Your advice should be block them. Block them. And if he calls from another number, block them again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't change your number because you got other stuff involved. Hey up, Debbie. And it's like fifteen dollars to change your number. Oh. Please. You rang us, Debbie. Oh. Are you gonna sit up? Debbie. Debbie. Debbie knows the police so well that she's quite happy to greet them from under her duvet. Let's have a quick chat. Does that little heater next to you not work? No. It's freezing in here. Yeah. Oh, that's why you got your coat on. You don't. Uh, what's it's my that face. Right. It's a birthmark. It it's been there since I was born. Yeah. A lot of people you find don't... I, I already knew. It's, if he polices anywhere where there's nightlife, like clubs, that's the first target. But he's probably heard it all his life, all 30 years. Say anything, the skirt around a subject. It's quite refreshing when people just ask you, what is it? I wish I could give you a really exciting story. Well, tell me. I wish it was like uh, rescuing somebody from a house fire or abducted by aliens or something like that, but it's not. It's boring. It's a birthmark. I was prepared for it. I'd lie. I'd definitely lie. Oh, you know, I was burning building and I had to save X, Y, and Z and I ran in there that fourth time and that scaffolding fell on my face and, and I just, I screamed. Ah! And I just kept going. <laughs> I'm signing up to this job. I'm That's going to get abused. Story. People are going to call me all the names under the sun. That is prominent on my face. I know it's a pain in the neck, and you may say I should, don't, shouldn't need to do it, but for an easier life, get that number changed. Yeah, we'll do. And hopefully it'll help. All right, see you later. Dan Hunt isn't the only rookie in Skegness. Dan Healy just moved here from Rochdale. It's been hard uprooting my life in order to achieve my dream job. You know, I've had to, I've had to move away. Dan moved into it's his okay. new flat a month ago, but it's taking time to settle in. This is the living room. Obviously, you can see it's quite empty at the minute, but I'm going to be looking at getting a sofa this week. That's my housemate's room, we won't go in there because it's like a man cave. I don't even know what's alive in there. This is a spare bedroom. This will eventually have bunk beds in here for my children. I love my daddy. I became a dad at an early age, early 20s, you know. Some people would say it's too young. Dan's daughters aged... No cap, I would agree. I would disagree. I wish I would have had early 20s. I had all the energy back then. You know what I'm saying? And right now, my daughter has been, what, a teenager? Four and eight live with their mother back home three hours away. Probably been about 15 months since separated from the mum. It was a mutual agreement. It wasn't a mutual agreement, but... <laughs> It's hard being away from him. I speak to him every day. I see him on my days off, spend all my days off with him. But yeah, it's hard, you know. It's, it's a sacrifice I've got to make. I want to make my girls proud, and that's the biggest thing you've got. I just, as long as my girls are proud of me, that's, that's what make, keeps me going at the end of the day. Dan's been partnered with Mick, a former sergeant in the military police, who hasn't failed to notice Dan's slight... Do you think that's a logical excuse? I want to make my girls proud. I get, okay, like, I get the motivation that you telling yourself inside that brings. But let's be, let's be for real. Kids are, they don't care <laughs> until they hit a certain age, probably. But, like, they're just proud that you're their dad in general. 
Like, I walked into my daughter's daycare today. She was so excited. That's my dad. That's my dad. Oh, my daddy. She's just proud that I'm her dad. <laughs> That's it. Slightly unconventional appearance. Dan looked different to a lot of the officers that you get. He does have uh, tattoos, which is something that we don't come across uh, very often. What said out? What? About my appearance. No, nobody will say anything because it's acceptable. When I started, only five years ago, tattoos were as a big no-no, you know. A few years' time, I'm sure pink Mohicans with shaved sides of the heads will be acceptable. I'm not offending you any, mate, man. <laughs> it's Dan's first night shift. They've been called to Louth, usually a sleepy market town, but not tonight. Listen, he's drunk, he needs to go home, all right? Take him home. Or put him With Christmas just around the corner, well, hundreds awesome. of people have flocked into town to party. You all right, guys? How you doing? All right, guys. This is the first time as a police officer that Dan will have to confront a potentially hostile public. Well, I'm not from Yorkshire, I'm from... I feel like Dan is a super tryhard, and... Uh, we'll see. I hope he just keeps his cool. Manchester, but from my yeah. public orders, adrenaline fueled. You've got to be on your ball because you're surrounded by drunks on a night out. No what we'll do? There's another pub down here. We'll just have a walk around and we'll just do a lap of the block. Right. That was my first night shift with Mick, and he didn't know me too well, so he was like, "Do not leave my side. You stay with me." Experienced officer Mick knows that the atmosphere can turn violent in an instant. Just last week, the police had to use a taser on a local here. Stay down! Stay down! Stay Mick down. was on wrestling with a guy on the floor. No! Stay down! No, no, stay down! And then the door staff are asking for help because they were having problems with somebody else. No! Wait a minute. Okay. Hold on. No! What's he doing? Did he freeze up? Brother, what are you doing? Dan! You're a police officer stood there in uniform. You can't just stand there and watch and say, I'm sorry, I can't come and help. You've got to go and help. It's your job at the end of the day. They don't know you're on your first night shift. Stay down! Stay down. You alright with him? Listen, fella, stand up. Stand up. Walk over here. I'll get up and I'll get up and I'll go out. You're going to stay around there, yeah, and just leave around there, or you don't want to get locked up, do you? One of the most important rules in policing is never, never to turn, turn your, your back, back on your partner. On your partner yeah. A rule Dan is now breaking. Walk away now! Come on, Walk away! No, 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 I'm not listening to it. Right, I'm not listening to you because you, you pissed me. I am dealing with my car. He kind of wandered off from me. On a street, you don't know what's around the next corner. So you need to really keep visual contact. You come back this way, you'll be getting locked up. Come back this way, you'll be getting locked up, so go that way. Don't come back near the pub anymore. If it's kicking off, if there is problems, you need to be able to see that person. Um, That's real rookie behaviour. Yeah. This is real rookie behaviour. No, it was a couple of blows kicking off and the bouncer kicked him out. Backup has now arrived yeah. and the situation is under control. <laughs> Sorry, man, I didn't realise. you just got to watch where the other officer is at all times, yeah. right? Yeah. OK? No, I, I thought you was behind me. <laughs> Obviously. No, you didn't. No, you didn't, Dan. You're not going to sit here and tell us that ball face lie. <laughs> you knew he was on the ground tackling and, and, and grappling with that man. No, you wasn't. When you make mistakes in the job, you know, you're not happy about it. But Dan's not the only rookie learning from their mistakes. Julia's about to experience a baptism of fire in the drug world. Police, open the door. I had no idea what drugs look like. Hold on, what are we doing here? Like, oh, this is heroin, is it? All right, OK. Why would they... You smelt the bacon? Hmm? 45-year-old mum, Julia, just gave up a career as a driving instructor to fulfil her lifelong dream of becoming a police officer. I'm sorry, it's, we're only 13 minutes in, and I... I Listen, I don't understand it. Wait, you're telling me, and it's not, I don't care, any 45-year-old person can join the force? 
How did they pass? Don't, isn't there like a physical? Don't you have to be able to do X, Y, and Z? Being one of the older ones, I was wondering if I was going to manage to uh, sort of keep up with them and take on board so much learning. I'm not as worried as I was when I first started. It's all starting to slot into place now. Do you want to flick the blues on? I'll just check the back ones. Yeah. Yep, they're definitely on. Julia has six weeks left with experienced officer Pete before she starts policing on her own. Their shifts have been relatively uneventful until tonight. The killer of your one seven nine. You need to post the following address, please. They've just been called to help a man named Joaquim, who says he's been attacked by his friend. I want that man out of my house, yeah? He punched me one time, the glass is gone. See the face in your head. Please open the door. Yeah? It's all right. But Joaquin's friend is nowhere to be found. Are you sure you've not seen him leave at all, have you? Uh, no. Can you come down to the police station and we get a statement from you? Yeah. Taking accurate statements and being able to analyse them is a crucial part of the job. We'll get it sorted, all right? But this is the area Julia's least confident about, especially when there are drugs involved. So it's about sort of two months ago, he started to get paranoid, yeah? Because he's a smackhead. Right, he's, he's on, uh, yes, he's on, yes, he's on, yes. he's taking drugs, yes, is he? he's a smackhead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what sort of drugs? Ah, hey, hey, he said she's a, he's a smackhead, she was, ah, uh, yeah, right, he's on, he's, 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 uh, he's, uh, what kind of drug, that was funny, Julia, go back, oh my god, that's great. Months ago, he started to get paranoid, yeah? Because he's a smackhead. Right, he's, he's on, uh, yes, he's on, yes, he's on, yes. he's taking drugs, yes, is he? He's Precisely. And yeah. What sort of drugs is he taking then? And, and, uh, yeah. Have you ever taken drugs before? Um, alcohol and tobacco. That's it. I had never ever come across anything to the point of sort of somebody would say to me, "Oh, do, do you know what what cannabis smells like?" Before I started doing this job, I had absolutely no idea. Do you want me to read? Where's she from? Out to you. Mind, you mind, yeah, please. not a problem. He fell asleep at about 10 a.m. A man came round and he split a bag into two and told me to give the other half to. Why is she reading it like a story, a nighttime story, like a like a Dr. Seuss book? Julia's lack of knowledge of the drug world means she's missed a crucial revelation in Joaquin's statement. How it reads is, technically, he has admit, admitted to drug dealing in his own statement. We were having an argument about the amount of heroin that was in the syringe. And mm. he was saying I was lying about it all. I'm not sure if Julia has clocked the fact. No, she hasn't. She's over here reading bedtime stories. He's admitted to this as yet. He kept saying I was pissing him off. How do you think that statement went? Um, Have you picked up on anything he's admitted to doing? Uh, have you got the statement on you? Yeah, go on. What have I... Uh, Keys yeah. split a bag into two and told oh, me to give the other of, half... Uh, possession Is um, it just possession? Supply. Yeah. Because he's he's gone... Uh, yes, so yeah. you're talking about... Yeah. 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 Did you... There was. It was rattling my head about, yeah. hang on a second, there's... All... No, it wasn't, Julie. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it was not. Stop lying to us. It's okay. You know, you're still in your training pro period, so, like, but don't sit there and lie. To do with heroin and everything else, where, where's this going? <laughs> it started to dawn on me that, ah, yes, it was, because he'd been given it and then he gave it to uh, someone else. So it's like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Bit of a lie. This is the dumbest... This is great comedy, this show, first and foremost. But the dude that's that's in that chair giving that statement is an idiot. Terrible moment that was when talking to Pete. <laughs> yes, Although she he technically like admitted to drug dealing, Julia and Pete are more mm. concerned with catching the friend who allegedly attacked him.
It's New Year's Eve. All the rookies are on duty tonight. But for Jack in Boston, working during the festive season takes some getting used to. I keep getting messages from all my friends before I came to work. They were all out at parties, um, wishing I was there. But obviously, some people have got to work, and I'm one of those people this year. Where are your friends party at? Soho? Question mark. Happy New Year. Oh, so we need a selfie. I know, we start well. You too. Dan is also busy policing the streets of Skegness. There you go. Dan is... I mean, Jack... Not super friendly officers. But not all the officers are enjoying themselves. Because they put it on, everyone... It came over the radio, somebody pressed their red button which you have on top of your radio, it's like the an emergency button. button. And it was my colleague, Ellie, you get like a, like an alarm go off in your ear. Where's our colleagues, in there? And you just hope they're not getting their head kicked in. A female officer has been dragged to the floor in a busy pub. She would only press her emergency button if she was in serious danger. Dan and his colleagues from all over the area drop everything to come to her rescue. Well then, up you get. On your feet. This has got blood in it. You're gonna have to go in. I'm not even gonna lie. You're tweaking if you put your hands on an officer. You are tweaking. You don't care about your freedom. You don't. You don't. You might not care about life in general. Back yeah. of that van. Ain't got a cell, but it, we'll sit him on it. Sit him in the back. That was my first bit of confrontation I'd had to deal with. What? If maybe the night before somebody had told me you're going to have to go to an assistance call tomorrow, where an officer struggling and it's kicking off in the pub, I probably would have worried myself sick thinking about it. It's going to have to go around this side, guys, because it's there's no selling it. It's funny, adrenaline just kicks in, and I went in, got stuck in, didn't fear, wasn't scared, dealt with it. And it was only afterwards I thought, wow, we did it, and didn't even think about it. I couldn't see anything, because people everywhere, I go, go to the bar staff, where are they? Yeah, like, I, I'm going to be real, like, it don't matter how drunk you are. Like, I've been, I've been hammered, and I've never <laughs> thought about doing anything like that. Like, uh-uh. He was like, they're down there. Back at the station, everyone's relieved that Ellie wasn't hurt. He was nearly at the door, like, we were pushing ourselves, so we couldn't get out the door, so we decided to run through the people. Dan's face was like, thank God you're here, mate. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> it's quite reassuring when you get there, you see everybody rocking up, everyone drops what they're doing and just gets there. Which reassures me a bit, knowing when I'm going to press mine, or if, hopefully I never have to, but if I press mine, that'll all come running. What's that, bangers and mash? It's New Year's Day. After working until 7 a.m., he's finally getting to spend some time with his husband, Danny. I haven't had any jobs yet where there's been mentions in. Wow. You know, salute. Shout out to the community, but I, I did not, I did not, I had no idea. I had no idea. Normally, I'm good at that. Like the sensor, but just, I don't know. It started to go off at the end, like of this last little scene, but. Nice or anything. Good. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's all right at the minute. It's all right at the minute because Cal's got a taser. So that's not too bad. We'll get a taser. Danny also works for the police, but not on the front line. He's an operator in the control room. Mm. When you put that stab vest on, you just get on and do it. It's like you're playing a part, isn't it? When you get the uniform yeah. on, you're not Daniel, you are then PC Hunt. Thankfully, you're here to offload to. It must be difficult when there's officers and they've got nobody at home. You know, I get, I get 
ridiculed in the comments of some of my videos when there's communal members, which I have no issue with. But if y'all to see in the chat what they chatting about, y'all to cancel the chat. Unlike the newlyweds, Dan Healy faces an empty house to go home to each evening. His family are three hours away, and he can barely afford to furnish the place he's renting. Wrong quid for that. Uh -huh. 169 pounds. Mm -hmm. 1,100 quid. The starting salary is 19,000 a year. It's not a bad pay, you know, but is this... What year is this? Starting salary worth it for a probationary officer, and in my opinion, absolutely not. It is low compared to people in other jobs, you know. You get people working in supermarkets or, you know, in some restaurants that earn more than us, you know, and they've not got the dangers you've got to face. My boy, you in the wrong store. You need to go to Facebook Marketplace. You might can find some free stuff. This is a little bit. This ain't. It's out your range for like you said it, not me. Could lose your life at the end of the day, you know. I agree with you. Dan's about to start a late shift in Skegness, which means tonight he'll be working until four o'clock in the morning. My little girls. I have a look at them every time you go out to shifts. Go ahead, mate. Within minutes, Dan and Mick are called to an emergency. Domestic. She's, she's called it in from the phone box, though. The call is from a woman who phoned 999 after claiming to be attacked by her partner. We're not sure what's happened yet. We'll find out when we get there. If anybody, if you're in a relationship and your partner calls the cops on you or you call the cops on your partner, you need to, realistically, that relationship needs to be done. Yeah. Oh no, who needed to hear that? It's over. One of the most rural police stations in Lincolnshire is in Sleaford, where rookie Mark has just been stationed. No, I grew up in um, West Bromwich near Birmingham. We were quite a distance away from um, any kind of greenery. And, you, if, and if you wanted greenery, you'd go to a local park or something. Nothing like this. It was a world of wagon. Absolute world of wagon. Mark is starting a new career at 46 years old. He's <sighs> finding being a rookie a bit of a challenge. Does that go anywhere in particular? If you go back into custody... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's some already yeah. there, and just it fill in that form on that the top That form, yeah, that blue... Yeah, and then I'm presuming thing. somebody will pick it up. Yeah, cool. It does feel a bit strange being the new boy and, and the new... Because um, they use that term a lot, a student officer. You think of students as, you know, late teens and early 20s, and I'm, yeah, far from that. There's nothing wrong with being... Uh, older at work and being new but as long as you can take like as long as you can take people that are younger to you giving instructions and constructive criticism and sometimes reprimanding you all right but if you can't then there's a problem and as the rookie it's his job to make the tea thank you mark thank it's, a, you. it's a modern make the tea form of bullying <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it at all. <laughs> Does this look like the face of a man who likes making tea? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Are we ready, Dad? Should we go on holiday? <laughs> there, yeah. Are we there, yeah? <laughs> Mark and his partner Mike are in charge of policing an area that's over 200 square miles. They've just received a call about a uniquely rural crime, hair coursing, an illegal sport. Is they it? have greyhounds or nurture type dogs and they chase hares and rabbits across fields. They tend to film it and they... they That's illegal? That seems harmless. They place bets as well over which... Maybe the better. ...dog can catch the, you know, the rabbit the quickest. They end up sort of ripping the rabbit to bits. Mark and Mike pull over a car that matches the description of the suspected hare courses. It even has greyhounds inside. Yo, right, boys, static contending vehicle check, please. Where are you from today? Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Long way to come walking the dogs. As we pulled over the car, I saw straight away there was five quite stocky fellas in there, and there were 
three of us. What's your date of birth? Don't no, no fucking nothing wrong yet. It's all right, just got the, it's all right, just got to chill out, fellas. It's all right. Rural policing is a lot more different from policing in the towns or cities. Okay. You know, if your nearest backup's 15, 20 minutes away, it's a long time to be holding on to somebody. Sometimes you, you do befriend people just to keep them on side. Brother? Yeah. Yeah, you're obviously the baby brother, aren't you? No, he's the baby. <laughs> <laughs> you're obviously the baby. <laughs> you don't want to have to be scrapping with somebody while you're waiting for your backup. I'm not filling your ass, mate. I'm just checking your pockets no, no, again. No, 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 no. <laughs> they haven't found anything incriminating on this. Not gonna lie, he's actually pretty good at uh, at, at whatever rural copping, policing suspects. But their story doesn't quite add up. We haven't been out the car. We haven't been out the car. Right. Okay. If you're saying, <laughs> all right, you haven't been out of the car. That's not under caution. All right. Mark and Mike don't have enough evidence to make an arrest. They have no choice but to let them go. Thanks for your time anyway. See you later. Hopefully not. All right, we haven't been caught, so they're all covered in mud. Yeah, we haven't even gone out of the vehicle, but they're covered in fresh <laughs> mud though, aren't they? Yeah. I think what's the saying? Prove it. Prove I was hair crossing. Thirty miles away in Skegness, Dan and Mick are heading to the house of a couple well known to the police for their violent fights. They gotta be all class A's or alcoholics. 100%, y'all well known for y'all fights? Like, who, who wants to be known for that? <laughs> Rookie Dan Hunt already dealt with Debbie when she hid under her duvet. But oh, Debbie again, okay. This is Dan Healy's first encounter with her. I want them arrested. For, for what? Well, for what he's done. Well, what, what's he evidence. done? So you're wanting to make a complaint of assault about them? Yeah. OK. Domestic abuse is one of the most difficult cases the rookies will have to deal with. It's often one person's word against another's. Dan needs to get to the bottom of what happened. At what point did he slap you then? Because you've said you pulled your hair, you called him a dirty fat bastard and you ran down the stairs then. It was just for... About just before you ran down the stairs, he slapped yeah. you. That's not funny. That's not funny. So which room was you in when he slapped you? Mm, in the kitchen? Passage is fatal attraction. Debbie has been known to assault her partner in the past. Because of her allegations, tonight they have no choice but to arrest her partner. I was arrested. You've given evidence. Do you understand that, mate? What for? It's just an allegation that uh, you've actually slapped Debbie tonight, so... Take her side all the no, time. No, allegation from her, right? Yes. You're a liar! You liar! Shh! Yeah, I don't want to put him in cuffs. I'm single at the minute. Uh, no lady in my life, apart from the only ladies I need in my life are my two daughters. But I've no no love interests at the minute. It's not to say I'm not looking, but I'm taking applications. Let's put it that way. Although none have come through the door yet. <laughs> oh, man. I'm gonna be honest with you, good guy, man. I, I feel like you might be still hung up on your ex, your baby mom. Ain't nothing wrong with that. She gave you two kids. You're supposed to still be hung up on her. And, and in a sort of way, but like... Are you emotionally available? If not, work on yourself, buddy. What do you think you're biggest mistake so far is obviously i've made mistakes but they're only like little ones i don't think they've been like terrible right you're frowning which means i've made some massive ones all well, the time is that me to pick from yeah it's been two days since jack stopped and searched a young couple he mistakenly thought were dealing drugs now he's coming to the end of another 11 hour shift with his partner andy just try not to irritate people <laughs> Try not to be yourself and piss everyone off. <laughs> yeah. Just put on an act. As long as you're not yourself, Jack, you'll be <laughs> fine. Yeah. After a stressful week, Jack goes to see the one person who understands him best, his mum. You know something, Jack? 
Remember that what Andy teaches you and how you are when you go out on the streets is going to reflect back on Andy. Oh, no, I know it For is. a long time. Yeah, no, I know it is. And you won't understand that until you're actually a mentor yourself. Mm. And you're mentoring somebody who's stubborn or, you know, thinks their idea, theirs is the right way and whatever. And you'll want to strangle them. Mm. When, when he gave me that feedback about not being proactive enough, it did cut quite deeply because I don't feel at the moment that I've got the knowledge base to make a quick informed decision and that makes me more reluctant because I don't want to get mm. it wrong. Right, what's your name? I'm just going to stand there and not let that up with fuck he's off his head, mate. Right, just, just come and stand on the pavement. Jack has just started his weekend foot patrol of Boston with... Yeah, Jack. Oh, yeah, it's the weekend, it's night time. And it's not looking real friendly anymore. His partner, Andy. Can you stop coming off of me, then? No, you stop no, Don't put your hands out and push me. Stop, stop. Swear. stop being abusive. Being out amongst the public isn't something Jack felt brave enough to do when he was younger. I remember being absolutely terrified of walking two streets away because I used to get bullied. A bit of a dark alley. Walk, walk down there on your own on a dark night. No, definitely not. I'd have people that were following me to my friend's house and they'd egg friends' houses. Nobody. Uh, Wouldn't dare leave the house. And when I, I left the house, I'd feel sick. My vision would go. What's up? Nothing. You've got your friends that are going out to parties or to pubs, and that's something that I never had the confidence to do. And I feel that they stole that from me. Yeah. He was bullied as a kid, and that is... You're only 26, man. See, this is what I be seeing, though. This is, this is like the origin story of a cop. You know what I'm saying? Bullied as a kid, then becomes a cop to get his get back. But Jack don't seem like that, but at the end of the day, you know, once them years start adding up, and that pleasant temperament starts leaving... It could get ugly. Awful as a parent. That is awful. Because you want to go out and you want to kill those kids. Jack had a real problem. Don't wish that on anybody. Don't wish that on anybody. Yeah, I, I just hope Jack has got the right counselling done. Because it's obviously affected you a lot. And as long as you're mentally established and able to do his work properly without... You know what I'm saying? Then cool, but if not, like, go get, like, the help necessary. Hello. You all right? I don't salute the police. Okay, what's happened to you? Have you had too much to drink or have you had something else? I ended up having to get the police involved and that's when it stopped. And that was the first time, really, that made me think, I'd quite like to do join the police because they've made a real difference to my life. Can you stand? And I've found, since being out there, that there's many people that can't look after themselves and they need me. I've got to help them. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. OK, thank you. It's not walking too bad now, is it? Not too bad. Yeah. I've walked worse than that. It's not hit either of the walls. No. <laughs> Today, Julia has the day off. She's heading down to London to see her son, James. I was never at home when he was growing up because I, I was still driving lorries. I used to be away all week and I'd get home and David would sort of say to me, oh, he's done this this week and he's done, he's done that. And you'd sort of be going, oh, come on, boy, just, just go and do it for me while I'm here. Um, so there was a heck of a lot I missed out on with him growing up. Sorry, I've sat everybody down. You're all right. Oh, so they both... <laughs> okay, so what was this, like a bonding activity? Yeah, you okay? I'm all right. Oh, sorry. Give okay. my dad a hug. Yeah. Six months ago, her 22-year-old son followed in his mum's footsteps. James has just been accepted into the Metropolitan Police. This is where I go, is your tie straight? <laughs> well, yours isn't, so... Isn't it? Oh, well, you sort me out. James is a London cop, Metropolitan Police. And I'll sort it, buddy up. Yeah. Thank you. Both of us at the same time in training and everything else. It's quite 
quite surreal. We never, never thought that that would ever happen. <laughs> when Julia was sworn into the Lincolnshire Police, there were just 24 new officers. But today, the Met have nearly 300 rookies passing out. For some reason, I'm uncomfortable looking at this many police. The commissioner turns around and says, oh, yeah, we've got 32 boroughs and 32,000 police officers. That's, um, that's quite staggering, really, when you sort of come down from about 1,100. <laughs> Julia might be a police officer, but it doesn't stop her worrying about what James will face on the job. Well, I'll always worry about him. As I say to him, look after yourself. He'll always be my little baby, even when he's 70 years of age. <laughs> That's two of us now. <laughs> really tough for him. <sighs> Not emotional in any way, shape or form. <laughs> he, does he start at 19,000 too? Because he's, but he's in like London. Shouldn't he be a little bit more? As long as he's doing something that he enjoys doing, that's the main thing. And if he's enjoying it as much as I am, then yeah, <laughs> he'll be having a bit of fun, I think. Come here, my baby. I'm not as worried as perhaps you think about Mum going out because I know that she can handle herself. She's a tough cookie. I think she understands the nature of it. Julia may be tough, but she's about to really be put to the test. Not Happy Valley tough. Best. Back on shift, they have a lead on the heroin user that attacked his friend. They're heading off to track him down, and Pete isn't taking any chances. He's bringing his taser. Control, In Boston, Julia and Pete are looking for a heroin user accused of assault. Just for your info, in case we shout up, we're just doing an arrest attempt. Can't get in because of the settee. Go around the back. They have two addresses to search. Unsure of how dangerous the suspect might be, Pete has his taser at the ready. I feel pushing Julia now this into more complex and confrontational situations is going to be good for her. Metal bar. Those situations where people may want to fight with us or may have weapons is helping her gain that confidence. Upstairs. I'll let you go as you've got the taser. Hello? Please? Check the shower. With the first house empty, the second address they need to search is the home of a neighbour. It's the police. I've had an allegation of assault, so I'm arresting you on suspicion of actual bodily harm. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Well, she know that by heart. Julia finally gets her man. Yeah. I have one under arrest. If you could inform custody, please. I'm getting used to this arresting mark, I think. So, wait, all police officers don't carry a taser? Twenty miles away in Skegness, Dan and Carl are answering an emergency call from a woman who's just been in a fight with her boyfriend. It's another of Carl's regulars. I know him. Oh, you know him? Yeah, we, we were there a few weeks ago, actually, for another domestic. It's not long until Dan starts policing on his own. It's important for him to take the lead on more complex jobs like this one. He bit me face here and pushed me out at the so I bit his arm. He's got a big mark on his arm when I bit him. And then I threw my Lamborghini bottle at him, which is all over that wall, as you can see. Oh. 
We, we they, obviously need to know how far you want this to go and what you want to do about it. I don't want to feel like I've wasted your time, but I don't want him, I don't want him to get too much trouble. Because I hate his guts, but I love him so much. Mm, so you've wasted their time. So much. But he still That's the hardest thing, I know, I know. I thought, yeah, I'm prepared for everything, yeah. I'll, I'll be all right with this job, but I've not had to deal with many women that are sobbing and that are upset. What do you say? He's such a good lad when he's not drunk. He's just so nice. He's so caring about everybody else. He's just... When he loses his temper... We've been trying to get counselling. For, what, five months now? She didn't call the police to vent? Isn't this a waste of taxpayers' dollars? And we've not got nowhere with that. No Dan like soon realises there's more to her situation than he first thought. There was, like, a wall unit, and it was a bit of a shrine to a baby, so I had a bit of an inkling when we went in because I saw it straight away. And she'd recently lost a baby Man, i know he's but, grieving because yeah. he yeah you're still grieving right, never mind let her vent but he's grieving worse than me because when it happened it was me what we're getting all the support and he was just he was supporting me so we never got to grieve properly and now i think it's catching up on him hold on and i think that's why he's losing his temper even more Hey, well, I've asked right. some questions anyway, domestic abuse questions, right? I know, obviously, it's the sad news what happened, but is there any other children? No. <clears throat> I do not know these questions off the top of my head, so we get given an aid memoir. So for me, it's even more awkward because I'm sat there reading it, and questions like that, you want it to be really natural, and for the information just to come out in conversation, and not just be so blunt as if to say, right, question number three, this. Do you feel isolated from friends or family? I just don't like going out. If people come to see me, they have to come here. Uh, Ever since I lost Fabio. Yeah. So you've been feeling depressed? Oh, God, yes. What the plan is, is obviously we need to speak to him about it. He's been quite amicable with me on the phone. I'm going to try and get him. amicable with me, that means good. Good, yeah. yeah. Carl knows the family, has a good rapport with him. And I just can't wait till I'm at that stage where I've been doing it a while and I know what I'm doing and I feel comfortable and I know people. I just think it'll make it a whole lot easier. I just knew that is there. Hello, mate, you all right? Hello, mate, how are you doing? You look like you've been running. Yeah, I've, I've just been jogging, but I'm supposed to be exercising, but it's not going very well. I don't envy you, but good luck anyway. Cheers. Cheers right, chucking from the house, he's just burgled. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Dan and Mick are waiting for their first call of the night. What was you like at school then? Uh, not proud to say, but you know, I never really went to school towards the latter years. I got excluded just before my GCSE, it's just because I never went. I decided to work instead. I totally regret that now. Is this it now? Is this your dream job? This is all I've ever wanted to do as a job. After leaving school with no qualifications, because not everyone can say they've, they've got the dream job. You see, so what do you say? Yeah. From Echo Fox Truck 5 0. We got a call, uh, a mail. You don't need no qualifications from school to be a police officer in the UK? I know in Chicago you need two years. You need it as, what is that, an associate's? I'd just been hit round the head with a hammer. Yeah. A hammer attack is the most severe incident that Dan has been called to so far. They're first on the scene. There was blood all over the floor, but it was still alive, which was, which was a positive. Despite being whacked on the head, miraculously, the victim is still walking and talking. Who hit him? How many times shit you with a hammer? Uh, I don't know. Right. So first, what was there? And no, I was screaming. She's arrested now. She's in custody. So all we need to do is get you better, get you squared away, and we'll get a statement from you as soon as we can, all right? Uh, she's going to jail 100%. Now their job is to gather as much evidence as possible before the detectives arrive. All right, pictures. I know, but it's for, it's for evidence, mate. 
Well, look at me. Facebook, no, no, no. Dan, just take a picture. Is this half? Then do exactly the same there. Mick wants Dan to take control of the crime scene, something he's never done before. Right, description of him, description of what you've seen on the floor, yeah. quick description of the room and his two houses and the alleyway, quick yeah. as possible, mate. I will just start it off. Just whatever arrived at scene. Yeah. I don't know. Is that all right? Like that's the first yeah, time I've ever done that. They don't, don't worry about it, mate. Honest. He ain't got no qualifications. Can he spell? Hello, Sarge. As Dan left school when he was 15, paperwork is one of his biggest challenges. See, I wasn't being funny. I'm, this is a real question. I need to put what time we got here, don't I? Well, doesn't matter. Does it matter? As long as it's something. My English grammar wasn't the best, and it's still not to this day, and that's something I'm working on. Yeah. So far. <laughs> I mean, it's probably uh, not the best. Arrived at scene and I said, it's certainly yeah. scary. You're thinking, oh my God, there will be very experienced detectives are going to be involved in this. If it helps, you, like I say, you can draw, bird's eye view, front door, don't have to be near. Going, there will be very experienced detectives are going to be involved in this. If it helps, you, like I say, you can draw, bird's eye view. said what I thought he said. He said, look, I know you're having a hard time spelling this out right now. So if you want, you can draw it. That is funny. Don't do that, man, like that. That is, oh, my God. That is harsh. Hey, front door. That's not funny, but I, it's not funny that he can't, you know what I'm saying? It's funny that he, this dude, this dude is funny. It doesn't have to be neat. It's just a scene, and it's just you. I need to make sure I'm doing it right, because any cock up could effectively hinder the investigation. I've filled this out best I can so far. It's the first time I've ever done one of these. Yeah, it's all right, don't worry. After half an hour, the detectives arrive to take over the crime scene. Dan has to hand over his report. That is pretty strong, that's fine. Got time yeah. is 22 Dan, minutes past eight. You're doing a really good job, mate. When we've been... Have you got everything you need? Dan's had a bit of a baptism of fire tonight. Give him a very, very quick... PC Van Gogh is crazy brief and chucked information at him he's taken it all on and he's done what he needed to do but i did see her walking off in that direction he did good and i think it shows how much he's developed to be honest and how much i feel that he can and what he can do and my confidence in him See, you know we all went through this he didn't go through this we went through going to school and having to read and get up in front of the class and read out loud this is what it's reminded me of he didn't have to go through this so at 30 he's you know this is it. Dan, Dan, Dan Healer, you all right? I like to think I handled that job well. Those were growing pains, but now this is... As far as I'm aware, there was no cock-ups. I joined the job because I wanted to stand up for what's right and what's wrong. <laughs> Give Daniel two gold scars. <laughs> is the chat like this today? Wrong, and to it's help let my children grow up in a safe environment. I mean, I know I'm not a one-man band, I'm not Superman. I can't change the world all on my own but I can certainly help. <laughs> Police officers now, we're not just out to catch bad guys. We're the social worker, we're the paramedic. We're everything, really, as much as we can be. With no qualifications. Seeing how some people live, it's made me realise I have actually lived a pretty sheltered life. Great. Oh, my knee. And I thought I'd had a bit of life experience. Clearly not. This is a pretty entertaining, I'm not even going to lie. I was fully entertained. We took a 44 minute show and made it one hour. This is great TV, man. Tell leave a like, comment, I'm gone. Subscribe to.